the dreaded slice. A shot that will be so familiar to far too many of you watching this video. If you slice your driver, but typically not the rest of your clubs, today's video is going to tackle that exact subject, why it is and what you need to do with this club to make it not a weakness, but turn it into a strength and help you to hit higher, longer drives than you ever dreamed possible. If you really want to understand why you slice the driver more than any other club in your bag, you need to really learn what makes the ball curve in the first place. When the ball curves in the air, whether it's to the left or the right, it's because the spin axis that the ball is spinning around has been tilted. So all shots you hit have backspin. Every single one of these shots that flies up into the air, the ball is spinning backwards. And it's doing so around a spin axis which can be straight, horizontal, which means the ball's gonna fly straight. Or you can tilt the spin axis and that will cause the ball as it flies to curve to the right or curve to the left. What makes that curve happen is a difference between the club face and the club path when you hit the ball. Let me try and explain what that would look like using this little setup I've made here for you to be able to understand how these things work. The orange stick that's pointing directly at the camera is gonna be representative of the club path. That's the swing direction, the, the direction your club's traveling when you hit the ball. And the white stick that's protruding up into the air here slightly is representative of the club face or the loft. Now this vector here, this club face vector, can change and go up and down depending on the club that you're hitting. The driver would be the lowest and the sand wedge would be the highest. That's going to be important later when I come to show you how the ball curves. Let's show you this straight shot to begin with. When these two lines or these two sticks are aligned, I'm using my orange stick here just to show you that, the club path and the club face are pointing in the same direction, that's going to create that horizontal spin axis I just talked about. The ball is going to spin perfectly backwards around a horizontal spin axis. This ball is going to fly straight, straight wherever this swing is directed. So in this instance, it's at the camera, this ball is going to fly dead straight. But I could also turn both of these to the left and I'd hit a shot that would pull directly to the left. No curve, straight shot, this time it's gone to the left because both of these are pointing in that direction. And then I could also do that on the other side. So pointing to the right, the club face and the club path. Because they align, because they match, the ball's gonna fly straight. Now there are a couple of very small additional pieces that affect this equation, but for the purposes of keeping this as simple as I can for today, just think about this in terms of club face and club path. So that's how you hit a straight shot. What's it gonna look like when these two lines get disconnected? So now I'm beginning to build in some curve to this shot. I've got the path of the swing still traveling at the camera, but now the loft on this club, the club face, is pointing slightly to the right. This angle here might be representative of, let's say, a seven iron. It's about 35 degrees, the club's pointing up in the air. There's the loft. You'll see here how these two lines well, these two sticks now do not align. There's a difference between them. There's an angle here created. And the bigger that this angle gets, the greater the tilt of the spin axis. So now this ball is going to spin around an axis that's tilted. This is going to cause the ball to curve off to the right. This is what a slice looks like in terms of club face and club path. And as I already mentioned, the wider these two sticks get apart, the bigger the slice would be, or the bigger the tilting of the spin axis would be. And there's the piece that matters the most when it comes to understanding why you slice the driver more than any other club. If we keep the relationship here between the face and the path the same, meaning the disparity or the angle between these two is the same, but I take this stick, this white stick, and I lower it, because that's what a driver's gonna look like, now I've got 10 degrees of loft on my driver. This difference in terms of degrees between these two sticks has remained the same. All I did was lower the loft, lower the vector, which means that the, the white stick is now flatter and closer to the ground. Look what happened to the spin axis. Something that was still on the same angle, was pointing up here, created a relatively small tilt to the spin axis. Now I move the driver loft down to some 10 degrees and keep the path the same. That spin axis has been tilted excessively, extremely. This is tilted all the way to the right like that. This is why 
you slice the driver more than any other club. Your swing, your mechanics, your delivery of the club may well be almost identical as it is to your irons, but the margin for error that you have with the driver is so much smaller, and because of that, the deficiency in your technique and the way that you deliver this club to the ball means that you simply cannot get away with those deficiencies any longer, and it shows up the most with the driver. So now you know why the ball curves and why the ball curves more with the driver than any other club, we have to reduce the gap and the space between where the face is pointing and where the path is going at impact. Just drawn very basically on the ground here, you get an image of what's really going on when you slice the ball. The club is traveling across or to the left, like the orange stick, that's where the path was pointing, and the face is open to that path, so the club face is pointing to the right of the swing direction. That's your slice, and as I've already demonstrated, it's worse with the driver than any other club because of the lack of loft on the club face. Another factor that contributes to you slicing the driver more than any other club is the length of the shaft. The longest club usually dictates the longest swing, and the longer you swing, or the further back you swing, the more susceptible you are to losing your wrist angles and letting this thing collapse at the top. Once you do that, this lead wrist goes into a condition called extension. It means it cups. You've got this angle in the back of the wrist. And the reason that's a bad thing is because extension in the lead wrist equals an open club face. They're directly correlated. So when I let the swing go too far and the lead wrist extend, I open the club face. That's that white stick on the ground right there. So if I want to fix my slice, I have to fix my club face first. How do I do that? By getting to the top and making sure this wrist is not extended at all. And if you wanted to learn what that feels like, a very simple idea would be to put a credit card or similar shaped plastic card down the back of your glove into the position there where it's just sitting, poking out very slightly from the back of the glove. That's going to place a restriction or a sensation at least. It's going to give me some feedback as to when I start extending this wrist too much. The goal here for me when I do a backswing would be to keep the card off of my forearm. So if I swing back and did this correctly, at the top, my left wrist would be flat and the card would not be touching my forearm. Now if I went too far and I began to keep extending the swing and extending the wrist, you begin to see how the card is now touching my forearm, it's even flexing and bending because I've taken the swing too far. That's going to give me the feedback of what the wrist needs to feel like at the top in order to close the face sufficiently, start to bring this vector, this club face stick, in towards the target. I want that club face to be much closer to square, which I can control at the top of my swing by making sure my left wrist is flat. Let me go ahead and show you in a little bit more detail what's going on with the wrists using the hack motion wrist sensor. This is gonna really dive into the differences at the top of the swing that you see with the driver that causes you to slice. When I set up to the ball, I'm gonna go ahead and just hit a slice here, and I'll explain some of the numbers after I've hit this shot. There's another slice right there. Ball's curving off into the trees, never to be seen again. What happened there at the top of the swing was my lead wrist was too extended. You'll see from the data on the screen, I started out with a very small amount of extension in the wrist, and that's correct based on a neutral grip. You're gonna have a very small amount of extension. But what the best players do by the time they get to the top, as we've already said, is they have this wrist flat. You'll see right here that the wrist is in one degree, two degrees of extension when I demonstrate. When I actually hit that shot, that last shot, my lead wrist was in 36 degrees of extension. Huge amount of extension, where I now got the club face open, and that's causing me to slice. So I can use the hack motion wrist sensor to give me some feedback on the exact range that this wrist needs to be at the top of the swing. Similar to the credit card drill that I just shared with you, once I get that wrist into the right spot at the top, it means the club face is in the right position and I can go ahead and swing down and hit the ball much straighter from that correct wrist position. I've gone ahead and enabled the biofeedback feature that's on this wrist sensor just so that you can hear when the wrist is in the correct position. I'm just gonna move the wrist into range 
and you'll hear that noise. Okay, now when I set up to the ball, we're going to get that little bit of that noise. It doesn't have to be there when I hit the when I set up to the ball. It doesn't always need to be sat making the sound. The sound is at the top. I need that to be something I get as far as feedback is concerned to tell me that my wrist is in the correct range. So if I go to the top and I go too far and I extend that lead wrist like I did on my original swing, you can hear that I no longer hear the feedback. But if I reduce the amount of extension in that wrist, essentially make that wrist flat, like I had that credit card down the back of my glove, you'll see how that now falls very much into the range. And I can come down from that position, not only with a better club face, but also with a better club path. Those are the two things that you know need to be in place for you to hit the ball straight or even draw the ball. And the two things that are out of place when you're slicing is the club face is too open and the swing path is too far to the left. So the first thing to fix is the face. What you do at the top is you make sure that that wrist is flat. There we go, perfectly in range. And then I can hit the ball from this position. I'm gonna get a perfectly straight or even slight draw down the middle of the fairway. That was controlling my wrist angles that led to that correct outcome. It really is all in the wrists. Now you may not have a hack motion wrist sensor to be able to measure your wrists, but if you don't have that, the credit card drill and keeping the lead wrist flat at the top of the swing will truly change the way you hit your driver forever. So there's the reason why you slice the driver more than any other club in your bag. And it may also help you to understand why your favorite club in your bag is your favorite club, whether that's your hybrid or your fairway wood, because there becomes a point of diminishing return when the face and the path are misaligned, where any club above that with lower lofts begins to slice too much. You just don't hit the ball any better, even though these clubs are supposed to go further. So if you truly want to fix your driver and stop slicing it, tackle your wrist angles first, and then the swing path piece will come second. If you'd like to learn more about the hack motion wrist sensor that I featured in today's video, you can take a look down in the description. There's a link that will take you to the website and a discount code that will save you 5% off the product at checkout. And if you're keen to continue your driver education, you can go and check out the video I made right here on the wrench with the driver. This is the concept of keeping your weight 100% forward while hitting this club. And if you'd like to learn three ways to maximize your driver distance, this video right here is gonna be the one that you wanna click on next.